Oh, hello there. My name's Mr. Evans. And this is my station. I do all sorts of things around here. It's my job to make sure everything at the station runs just the way it should, without confusion or delay. But no matter how busy I am, I always find time to read a story about the adventures of my good friend, Thomas. Would you like to hear a story? That's fantastic. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in my office. See you there. Oh, I was sure I'd get here first this time. I went to get my picnic basket. Maybe that slowed me down. I've made myself a picnic because this afternoon I'm going on a trip. I'm visiting another railway, one I've never been to before. It's a long way, so I've brought plenty of sandwiches and a banana so I don't get hungry. I'll be travelling on a fast express train, like Gordon's Express. In today's story, Thomas goes on a long journey to somewhere he's never been before. And the story is called... Journey Beyond Sodor. One sunny day on the island of Sodor, Henry ran into trouble in Vickers Town. A signal failed, Henry crashed. Henry needed repairs. Sir Topham Hatt decided that James would take Henry's cars to the mainland. James puffed with pride. Thomas wasn't happy that James got such a great job. And James thought he was Sir Topham Hatt's favourite engine. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Early in the morning, Thomas went to the Vickers Town goods yard. He quietly took James's cars and headed for the mainland. He was excited and a bit worried. He didn't know how to find the Bridlington goods yard to deliver the cars. On the mainland, Thomas introduced himself to a crane called Beresford. Thomas asked for directions, but Beresford couldn't help. Thomas rolled on his way. Later, Thomas found a strange engine yard filled with old machine parts. Heidi, hi! Nice to meet you, tooted an engine named Lexi. Another engine, Theo, rolled up. Thomas had never seen such odd engines. He asked what kind they were. We're experimental, Theo replied. We're test models, Lexi explained. Lexi and Theo had a friend called Merlin. But Thomas didn't see him. Oh, you won't, Lexi peeped. He's a stealth engine, designed to be hard to see. Invisible, Lexi chuckled. Let's just say he's always disappearing. Thomas refueled and set off again. Soon he rounded a bend and saw a giant steelworks. At the steelworks, Thomas met two huge engines. The big tank engine was called Hurricane. The diesel shunter was called Frankie. Thomas asked for directions to Bridlington. Oh, don't worry about going to the goods yard tonight, said Frankie. Just uncouple your cars. So Thomas did. Long before dawn the next day, Frankie and Hurricane woke Thomas. They'd already delivered his cars to Bridlington. Then I'd better get back to Sodor, Thomas replied sleepily. Oh, we helped you out, little tank engine, Frankie said. Now won't you help us? So Thomas spent all day shunting ladle cars and doing other hot and dangerous tasks. He was anxious to go home. But when Thomas was done, Frankie and Hurricane wouldn't let him go. There was more work to do. They locked him in the steelworks. Meanwhile, back on Sodor, the engines wondered, where was Thomas? And James was tired of doing his friend's jobs. I'm going to the mainland to bring him back, he said. That night at the steelworks, thunder crashed and lightning flashed. Thomas knew he had to escape while Frankie and Hurricane slept. He rolled through the dark, slowly building speed and bashed through the gates. Thomas fled into the woods. Are you hiding? Asked the voice in the dark. I love hiding. I'm a stealth engine. Thomas knew the voice was Merlin's. Don't worry, Merlin whispered. You're with the best hider ever. Thomas felt safe. The big engines didn't find him. The next morning, Merlin was gone. As Thomas headed towards Sodor, he met Beresford again. 
just as Frankie and Hurricane got near, Beresford quickly hoisted Thomas up and hid him. Just then, James rolled down the track and met Frankie and Hurricane. The three of them went off together. Thomas knew he had to save his friend, and he knew who could help. Thomas hurried to find the experimental engines again and asked Theo, Lexi and Merlin to help save James. We can't do anything, Theo said. We can try, Merlin replied. This is so exciting, Lexi tooted. Theo and Lexi pretended there was an accident. Frankie and Hurricane went to see what had happened. Thomas and Merlin snuck into the steelworks. James, Thomas peeped. We have to go. Oh, I'm ready, James puffed. I don't like this work at all. Frankie and Hurricane returned. They chased Thomas and James back into the steelworks. Theo tried to help, but he crashed into a control panel. A giant magnet swung out and stuck to Thomas. It lifted him and carried him toward a glowing furnace. Theo hit the release button. Thomas crashed down and knocked over a vat of molten steel. A fiery puddle spread toward him, but Hurricane shoved him out of the way. Thomas was safe, but Hurricane's wheels had touched the boiling hot puddle. Help, he steamed. My front wheels are melting. Merlin pulled Hurricane to safety, but his front wheels would need major repair. Without Hurricane, Frankie was lost. I can't do it all by myself, she said. Nobody wants to work here. But Thomas knew some engines that might. The experimental engines had said they'd work at the steelworks. They'd be happy to be helpful and useful. Back on Sodor, their friends were happy to see them again. Thomas apologised for taking James's cars. I know I'm not Sir Topham Hatt's favourite engine, James peeped. If anyone is, it's you, Thomas. Silly James, Thomas said, chuckling. There's a sight for sore eyes, Sir Topham Hatt said. He was happy to have all of his favourite engines home again. Well, Thomas certainly had an eventful journey. And that gives me an idea. Let's make a tunnel for your Thomas track. Then you can go on an adventure of your own. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to make this colourful mountain tunnel. To make it, you'll need some card, some sparkly white paper, some patterned green papers, some sticky labels, a ruler, a pencil, a glue stick, some scissors and a hot glue gun. First, Draw a triangle shape for your mountain. Get an adult to help you cut out the triangle. Then, draw a tunnel shape, big enough for your engine to go through. Now use this shape as a template to make the other side of your mountain, like this. Then ask your adult to cut out two rectangle shapes, like this. These will be the sides of the mountain. Now draw your mountain shapes onto the coloured paper. Use a different colour and texture for the sides. Stick the paper to your card shapes with the glue stick. Then get your adult to carefully glue all the pieces together with hot glue. Add some snow to the top of your mountain with the glittery white paper. Draw around the mountain and cut out the pieces. I'm cutting out some wavy shapes to look like the edge of the snow. Make another shape for the top and glue all the pieces on. Next, I'm using these sticky labels to add detail around the edge of the tunnel. They look a bit like bricks. And we're done. Are you ready for your big adventure? Toot toot! See you next time!